what you are seeing here is called the tilt shift effect. And this effect usually was created using some kind of a funny specialized lens like this one right here, which you can bend like this. However, with the recent Lightroom update, we can now recreate this effect pretty realistically, I would say, with just a bit of Lightroom editing. So let me show you how this is done. So here we are in Lightroom and as always if you want you can follow along by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of this video. Before applying the tilt shift effect we do need to do the basic adjustments. If you're just here for this effect please check the chapters of this video to quickly navigate to this timestamp. Now for the basic adjustments let's go right ahead open up the basic panel. I want to change the profile to Adobe Landscape just to give this shot more saturation and I also want to adjust the white balance making it slightly warmer by increasing the temperature. However I'm only carefully pushing the temperature since I want to maintain that blue hour look. I also want to slightly raise the exposure making the shot a little brighter. You can see that looking at the histogram it's more on the darker side which however makes sense since we are working with a blue hour shot. And at this point the highlights are a bit too much. So let's bring them down, trying to get some more details out of the image by doing this. This looks perfectly fine like that. I'm also going to raise the shadows for more details in the darker parts. And I'm also going to raise the blacks very slightly. And at this point I think it's safe to also raise the whites. So doing this we will end up with overexposure but I can hold down the alt key to make it visible. You can see it's just going on in those very bright lights so I think a little bit of overexposure is totally fine. I do want to add a little bit of texture. This will make those smaller details look a bit sharper. At the same time I'm going to bring down the clarity to increase the softness overall. And then I'm going to bring up the vibrance quite a bit just to make this look like a classic blue hour shot. Okay, that's it for the basic stuff. We can compare the image to before real quick. So we did get a more intense blue in the sky. Overall the exposure looks much better but we can tweak it a bit more by applying some masking. So let's do that. Open up the masking panel and I want to mainly focus on the sky. So let's start with the big linear gradient covering most of the sky. And since I only want to target the sky, we need to further adjust this mask. This means I'm going to hit those three dots right here. I'm going to choose intersect mask width and I'm choosing select sky. This way we are really only targeting the sky. And what I want to do with this mask is to bring down the exposure, making the top part of the sky slightly darker. All right, that looks great. Making it darker will increase the saturation of this area, which I think is a bit too much at this point. So let's open up the color panel and bring down the saturation a notch to counter that problem. Okay, nice. I do want to add another linear gradient right away. Just on top of it like this. And again, just bring down the exposure slightly to get this vignetting effect going on. We can also go in the other direction. So let me create a radial gradient covering most of the horizon like that. Again, we only want to target the sky. So we are going to click on those three dots once more, choose intersect mask width, and again, choose select sky. You can already see we nicely masked out that church. And now we're only really targeting the sky in the back. So what I want to do with this mask is to bring up the exposure. And thus we are creating this kind of glowing horizon effect, which I think looks really, really good on this shot. Perfect. Now there's one more thing I want to do, and that is to give some more glow to all those lights in the foreground. I'm going to create one little radial gradient. Let's make it like this. And let's place it over two of those lights. So to add glow, I'm simply going to bring up the blacks. This will reduce the saturation. However, I want the light emitted by the street light to be very vibrant. So I'm going to click on that color box and let's choose a warm color tone somewhere around here. And let's make it really saturated. Perfect. I think I want to make the glow effect stronger. So let's 
open up the effects panel and bring down the dehaze in here. Uh, that looks great. Okay. Now we have added the glow effect on one of those lights. What I'm going to do now is to right click on the first radial gradient and simply choose duplicate radial gradient one. This will create a duplicate of that, of course, which I can now drag around in this image and just place over the other lights. And I'm simply going to repeat this step a few times until all those street lights are covered. All right, this looks great. Now we can do a little bit of color grading. So let's open up the color mixer real quick. I'm starting with the saturation. I want to bring up the red tones. At the same time, I do want to reduce those warmer orange and yellow tones. So let's bring them down just a little bit. And I maybe want to even raise the blue tones very slightly. I also want to head into the luminance tab and bring down the blue luminance to make the sky even darker like this, which I think looks really, really good. We can also apply a little bit of split toning in the color grading tab. Here I want to mainly target the highlights and make them a little more orange-ish. So let's set the hue to something here and carefully erase the saturation. So that looks great. Now let's get to the tilt shift effect. With the recent Lightroom update, Adobe has added this thing right here, lens blur. It's still in early access. This means it does have some trouble from time to time. It has caused Lightroom to crash a few times for other people. For me, so far it worked just fine. So what this tool does is it is intended to be used to create soft blurry backgrounds with sharp subjects in front of it. So we can hit that apply checkbox and Lightroom will automatically try to create some soft areas in the image where it makes sense according to Lightroom. However, in this image, there is no clear subject in the very near foreground. We do have the church in the center, but it's rather far away and behind the church, we just have some blue sky. You can see Lightroom is softening the water in the foreground a little bit, which already kind of looks like a bit of a tilt shift effect. So what we need to do to create the tilt shift effect is to manipulate the depth map of this image. And how can we do that? We can use the focus and blur brush to make that happen. To make our lives easier, we want to check this checkbox right here. And this will make the depth map of this image visible. The colors you can see here are corresponding to the focal range. And this just means this area selected is in focus while everything outside of it will be blurred. So knowing that we can further manipulate the image. To create a realistic tilt shift effect, what we want to do is to blur everything except for the church right there in the center. So I'm going to click on the blur brush. We do get the known brush settings. We can adjust like size, feather, flow, and so on. Let's bring down the brush size a bit. And now I'm just going to paint in blur. So I'm starting with the left side, covering the trees and the water on the left side like this. And I also want to make the blur on the right side stronger. So I'm going to paint over this as well. And as I paint over these areas, you can see the color change from purple to orange. This means we are shifting the areas from the focus range out into the blur range. So this is looking pretty good. We don't really need to blur the sky since there is nothing to blur in there. So funnily enough, Lightroom is bugging out right now and is just painting wildly over the image, but that's not a big deal. So we don't want this area to be blurry. We need to fix that by choosing the focus brush. And I'm just going to brush over this area to bring it back to focus. And once we're happy with how this is looking, we can deactivate the visualize depth checkbox. And here we have the tilt shift effect. You can see how those areas are now out of focus while the subject is nicely sharp and visible. You can see there are some tiny areas still in focus up there. I do want to change that. This time I don't activate the visualize depth checkbox. However, I'm just clicking the blur brush and I'm going to paint over this area. And let's maybe also paint right here over the lights in the foreground. 
just like this. Now there's also an area which I do want to bring back to focus. So I'm going to choose the focus, focus brush and just paint over here. All right, this looks cool. Of course, you can also play around with the focal range. If you would cover the whole range, of course, everything would be in focus. And the tinier the range here, the less of the image will be in focus. But now we can tweak things a little more. This tool not only will add some very, very good looking lens blur to your image, it can also help create bouquet. We do have five different bouquet shapes which we can use and which we can make stronger or less strong. Also, we can set up the blur amount. So I think we can bring it up quite a bit more to make it look more interesting, just like this maybe. And then let's work on the bouquet. Take a look at this area in the foreground. I'm going to choose another bouquet and you can see how the lights are nicely changing. This is looking quite good, but let's go through them real quick. So I think I want to go with the second one. And then we can use the boost slider to make the bouquet look stronger or less strong. Let's bring it up all the way so you can see the difference, which I think is a little bit too much. I want to tone it down a notch, but this right here looks really, really good in my opinion. And that is how you can recreate the tilt shift effect with just a little bit of Lightroom editing. Let me know if you like this effect or if you have any questions, feel free to write in the comments. I hope this video was interesting and helpful and thank you so much for watching this video.